they give you a regular pentagonal pyramid with a cutting line AA and then you have to draw basically three views uh, sectional right view, left view and top view. All three are cut so it's only the front view that's not sectioned. Then also draw a view showing the true shape of the section so that will be an auxiliary view from cutting plane AA at perpendicular with the cutting line and then something that's a bit of an oddity is that it tells you to add all the constructions on every view uh, but normally we do not add hidden detail on a sectional view unless they specifically tell you and then you go to the page, very important you'll see that the diagram was given in first angle orthographic projection okay, which means the left view is on the right side of the front view, the right view is on the left and top view is below so going to the diagram here we can clearly see that this will be the front view and this will be the top view there's the cutting line AA now on the cutting line AA please make sure that because there's no arrow on the cutting line this cutting line can be applied to any view and then the auxiliary view will come from this angle okay which is perpendicular with the cutting line but it's a non-specific angle so it's not 45 or 60 or 30 degrees right then uh, looking at the diagram from the side you can see that this is a left view okay so there's the left side of the pyramid so I've drawn in the Cartesian plane just to explain a few things so the vertical plane is the imaginary level that's behind the front view and the horizontal plane is the imaginary level that is underneath the top view and they are separated by the XY so the XY line actually represents both planes and it's also separated by it now please take note that the center of the pyramid is parallel with the vertical plane and perpendicular with the horizontal plane and the base of the pyramid of the pentagonal pyramid is horizontal with the horizontal plane and on it so the front wall will be from this side and the top view will be from above so obviously you would project down and draw the top view below okay so step one you will see that to find the center of the pentagon you go from one corner and draw a line to the opposite middle point and the same with that one just two of them and after that you can use that center to find the corners of the pentagon so obviously for now we're going to leave that in construction next I'm going to number the points now the numbering doesn't count in the exam but it makes life a lot easier okay so from this side I'm going to number it one two three four five but like I said you can number it whichever way you want and then the apex on top will be number six alright now to complete the front view I'm going to take the base points two and three the apex is already on top and one and four also already there on the front view as well so we don't need to take those and then we connect it and we get the two front solid front corners now obviously the front we're going to look at it from this side so we're going to see one two three four so five is behind it so you can see that five is actually behind it so that's going to be hidden detail that's going to be drawn in so now you'll see that your front view and top view will basically look like this so the front view is actually complete and there's the hidden detail line behind it for number five next you also want to label or number the front view so one is in line with one two is in line with two then it skips this one that's not number three this one is so three there it is and then four and then five behind it so it actually goes one two three four and then round the back and back to five and all the points go to six next we want to extend the XY line because obviously it's a little bit short on the page when it was given and then for the two side views I'm going to do them at the same time and therefore I'm going to do both bounce lines so the bounce line here that you see here is in is at 45 degrees with the XY line and same with this one so basically this harkens back to grade 10 orthographic drawings where you have uh, bounce lines that you use and it's still a tool that is available to you this is only one approach that you can take there are other ways of doing it but this is simply the definitely the quickest way of doing it alright so next I'm going to take all the base points from 1 to 5 and I'm going to take them both ways so to the left and the right and when you hit the bounce line you go up and I mark them on the XY line and then do the same for 6 so there goes 6 
then the line goes up now obviously that height is 70 but to get the height you simply take it from the front view draw a construction line across and where the two meet you'll have the apex point number six there and there on the right view then I connect the points so this is what the right view and the left view will look like when it is fully drawn obviously we not going to leave it like this because we're still going to cut it so um, we are drawing this in construction only all right next I want to number it so when you add the numbering the numbering makes life a lot easier so if I go to the top view from the right side I see three first then two so if I follow it on the bounce line therefore I num number three and two this one from the right side four and one I follow the bounce line so this point here on the base is both four and one so four is in front and one is behind it and then last but not least there's five and then you rinse and repeat for six so that's obviously going to be point six there at the top now <clears throat> in order to plot the section because it's being cut here we're cutting it right through the solid front view here so we're cutting this corner, then that corner, then five in the back, then we're cutting three, and last we're cutting number four. So I'm going to take it from left to right, and I'm going to work it through there. So there we're cutting the corner of six and one. So I take the point where it cuts for six and one, and I go across and I mark it on six and one. See why the numbering is so useful. You can do this without numbering, but it makes life a lot more difficult. All right, so if I take the line across, I mark it on 6 and 1. So again, please number because you're going to make life easy for yourself. Then I take the next one, is the corner of 6 and 2. So I mark that, I take it across, and I mark it on 6 and 2 there, 6 and 2 there. Then the next one is 6, 5. So I take it across, and I mark it on the corner of 6, 5 on both sides. And second last one, is the corner of six and three there you can see I marked it on six and three so it's basically on the same line as six two just lower down and then the last one is six four now once you've got those points plotted you can actually go and connect them and draw them solid okay so you can see there they basically are mirrored images of each other so this one is the same as that one just in reverse Right, so now, if we are drawing, we know already that this is a right view. So I'm looking at it from the right side. So from the right side, if I'm going to cut an object, there's going to be two parts. So which side part must I actually throw away in order to draw that view? So obviously, if I throw away the top, and I'm looking at it from the right, I will see the cut. That's the whole point. All right, if you cut an orange open, and you want to see the inside, you throw away the half or remove the half that you actually uh, want to clear your obstruction. If I remove the bottom part, then and I'm looking at from the right side, I actually wouldn't see the cut, which would make it pointless. Therefore, for the right view, looking at from the right, this part would have to fall away. Therefore, when I connect the right view, those lines can become solid. So the base or the bottom part is still left. For the left view on the right side, you can see that the reverse is true if I'm looking at it from the left side to the front view I'm cutting it open here I want to see the cut therefore I have to remove the bottom part in order to see that cut surface and there you can see it as you can see the bottom of the cut surface and then the rest that's little apex points that are left going to point corner number six all right now that we have that you can see that I'm going to actually start plotting the sectional top view now for the sectional top view you want to do exactly the same as before so you take 6 1 6 2 6 3 and 6 4 down and there you can see I've marked the four points but you'll see that I haven't taken down 6 5 because 6 5 is already a vertical line okay if I take that line down I cannot actually mark it on this diagonal here because I need the lines at an angle to be able to plot them so to solve that problem what you're going to do is you're going to pick any one of the two views to the corner of five so here's five's corner 
and that's the cutting point right there so I'm going to take this point to the bounce line and across in order to mark down so there you can see from the cutting point 5 I go down and I bounce it off the bounce line and then I can mark it on the top view there and that's how you find that last point and then you do the same you connect the points and now the top view will basically look like this right now you can see that our views are actually complete basically we've got our right view here there's our left view there's a top view now because these surfaces have been cut you actually have to indicate them cut with hatching and we simply do that by adding our hatching at 45 degrees now you can see here by the right view uh, my hatching is about a centimeter apart from each other the same with that one so I just changed the, di the direction now for the top view to make this hatching different than there I basically just reduced the gaps between them made it about seven millimeters right now we've fulfilled all the requirements except for one we still have to do the auxiliary view now the auxiliary view is also cut from AA but it has to be cut or projected at the angle of B so if we go to B here it has to be projected at that angle which is perpendicular with this cutting line so in order to do that we're going to project 90 degrees with construction lines now yes it's going to be uh, going over your views that's fine that's why you're gonna have to go quite quite a long distance away so when you go to the front view please make sure that you project exactly 90 degrees so you put your set squares on the line and then you project 90 degrees if your set square doesn't reach make a mark there take a longer ruler and just extend the line further out okay so once you project it at 90 degrees you want to go further and you want to go and add an x2 y2 now I could have moved this X2 Y2 closer but unfortunately that bounce line was in the way there so I decided to move it a little bit further away so this is the space where we're actually going to be doing the auxiliary view now unlike before we can't be using a bounce line to plot the points for the auxiliary view because the auxiliary view as is at a non-specific angle so in order to solve that problem we're going to follow the rule by going back over two XY lines now first XY line is obviously this baseline running here our second XY line is sitting here perpendicular with the projection so I've labeled it X2 Y2 to differentiate from the first one which was X, y, X and Y now to plot the points please take note so the first point comes from the corner of 1 so if we actually go back we can take the distance from this XY line and take the distance there from 1 to 1 or if you will if I want to draw the point 1 here somewhere on this construction line I go back and I hit the first XY line then I go along the construction and I hit the point once you've got that point there then remember we still only have gone over one XY line when I go down 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 there I hit the second XY line then you take the measurement do the same for two I want to find two somewhere on this line the cutting point so I go along the construction and I hit two I've only gone over one XY line then I go down 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 I hit the second XY line and I take the measurement for two so effectively you are going to do this you're going to take the distance for the cutting point one and you're going to plot it on the line then you're going to take the distance for two three four and five and there you can see that I've actually taken the same distances there and I've just plotted it over measured it from the XY line plotted from the XY line and then you can actually connect the points and make that solid and you can immediately go and add your hatching right now we haven't completed the view yet because we have the sectional view this is actually the true shape of the section so this is exactly what that section will look like if we looked at straight upon it at a 90 degree angle but we have to complete the entire view so we have to find the base going around here and then connect it to these corners so we're going to use exactly the same method as before okay so going to the top view 
we can this time instead of the cutting points we're going to take the base points so one two three four and five so we take the distance from the xy line to one from the xy line to two from the xy to five the xy to three the xy to four and we plot them just like before by going from the xy line to one from the xy to two xy to five xy to three xy to four and following the, exactly the same method as before okay then once you've connected the points you connect con the base points the five of them you take it to the cut surface just to complete the corners and then you can go and make it solid and it will basically look like this okay now last but not least what we have to add is the hidden detail please take note if we go to the front view the hidden detail must not run into the solid line because otherwise it looks like an extension so just make sure that your hidden detail stops a little bit before then that it doesn't seem like it runs out of the line the same here on this side you can see here with the left view there's only one hidden detail line and then with the auxiliary view we've got the three corners in the back that you won't see and that's hidden detail like i said before normally we do not add hidden detail on a sectional view unless they specifically tell you to do so and that's it we are done see you guys later